So moving on to the fault found since public release. Um, within the software, we have a, had a concept of a, a system fault, and the idea was that you should never clear a system fault, and if a system fault was detected, the system should shut down. And this was introduced at implementation in order for us to capture problems with doing things like writing to file, opening files. Um, unfortunately, there's a line in the software that um, deletes the audit log, which could potentially clear the system fault. So we should have used an or and not an and. This state, as I said, was introduced at implementation and had we put an in a cert invariant in the, the package which does the audit logging, then the Spark examiner again finds the fault if we use the simplifier. So if we put in an assert statement that's, that states that the, if we have a system fault then at the beginning, then we will have a system fault at the end, then the Spark simplifier can find the fault. And the moral is that we shouldn't have introduced state without introducing an invariant, or at least going back to the design and really understanding what that state was for. Now, I said this was a, a demonstrator project, and as such, we were allowed to, to fail to complete our, all of the activities, as long as it, enough was done at each stage to extrapolate and, and determine the total cost. And to that end, um, the requirements analysis weren't complete. We only did a sample of the various proofs at each stage, and the testing was not as complete as we would typically do. We didn't um, check for complete code coverage. Um, all we did was wrote enough test cases to cover the design, which is not how we would normally operate. However, the specification, the design, and the code were all completed. So, just put this slide up quickly to show an interesting property of the system in that 47% of the cost of the project was spent before any code was written, which seems very high, but at the point that we started writing code, we had a very strong understanding of exactly the system, what the system was meant to be doing. And had we completed all the assurance activities, then we believe that the, the total cost would have been about 150% of what it actually cost. That amounts to about 25 lines of code a day. However, the, if we'd done all the assurance activities, many of those activities would have achieved us EAL 6 and higher. So some of those activities were above and beyond the required EAL5 that we were aiming for. So, Tokenir became public um, in the back end of 2008 when a technology transfer agreement was signed between Praxis and the NSA, which basically allows all the software to be open source. And you can obtain the software either by Googling for Tokenir, I think it comes up on top, or going to the Ada Core website where it's cited. And what do you get in the public release? Well, you get everything from the original project, the, all the documentation, um, and that documentation is in a modifiable form so you can edit it, play with it. All the code, so that's both the code written to the um, EAL5 level and all the interface software. And we also provide, um, provided a peripheral simulator, or the source code for a peripheral sim simulator, and an overview and reader's guide. These were done outside of the original project. So why release the project? Well, the original aim of the project for the NSA was to understand whether um, writing EL5 EL software was possible cost-effectively. And their hope was that if we, they could demonstrate that it could be written cost-effectively, then their customers would be able to, would be encouraged to do so. So by making this, um, 
by making the whole project um, open source, we are making it available to the widest possible community and perhaps ach achieving above and beyond the original aims of the project in terms of um, demonstrating to others, to other people, the achievability of high security software. It's also a very rare opportunity for us to actually be able to show our wares. Normally we work under confidentiality agreements and we can't actually show you real Spark programs. So it's quite exciting for Praxis to be able to, to show the wider community exactly what we do. And hopefully um, the academic community might take this um, as a case study and perhaps extend it or, or use it to help in research. <clears throat> and I think that the, the number of downloads after the um, first week of release indicates, I think it was certainly surprising to me, the um, overwhelming interest in this um, release. So basically this project showed that the Praxis Correctness by Construction process produces high quality, low defect software. It is cost effective and it can produce software that conforms to the common criteria EAL5. So we achieved the goals of the original um, remit from the, M the NSA to, to demonstrate that you could write high security software. It does require us to have clear goals, precise notations, and apply a discipline of engineering at all stages. And we hope that the wider community can now gain a, a greater understanding of what's needed to develop high assurance software. <clears throat>